Hi everyone and welcome to another Fourth Floor tutorial. Uh, today I'm going to be answering a question that I found over on slash R After Effects. It was posted by the Rough Seventy Seven. Okay, he basically uh, wanted to do a screen replace on a piece of footage that he'd shot, and was having all sorts of uh, issues with Mocha and any sort of software, any sort of the plugins that shipped with After Effects. And I'm just going to kind of show you how I would personally go about doing it. Um, some people say go back and do it just with corner pins, but this is the approach I would do. And as we can see, there's a few issues with the shot that we're going to be working with. Uh, we have reflections running through the screen. As well as that, we the screen fully leaves the shot right at the end. So if we get on over to After Effects, I've already taken the liberty of bringing it in. And at this point, it's left the shot. So I still think this is quite possible to do with Mocker. So, if we take it over to Mocha AE, and I've already brought it in for a little bit of a test. Um, first things to do is to set the region that you want to track. So, go over and grab an X spline and make it about 10 pixels larger than your screen all the way around. I find that's the best approach when doing any sort of tracking. Make sure that the edges are relatively constant. So, and then just add a couple of extra splines that'll help. Um, I'm basically adding the these ones. Um, reason for the one on the left side is that it'll stay in shot all the time, and it should be able to build quite a good average off it. And then this one just literally to help corner pin the right side down uh, in the early part of the shot. Set the min pixels up to about 50% because we don't want a perfect average of it, but we want about 50% average. Find that might be a good approach to this. And then we'll just let the software track forward and we'll talk through a few of the issues and what we've got to work with. Okay, so this reflection that runs down the right side, this is obviously going to cause double drift inside uh, Mocha. So again, a 50% average is just going to take that out. Uh, we're going to have to probably use an adjust track over the top and we'll set it to certain uh, pins to turn it from a planar track to a point track, which should make it a lot clearer. And then finally, this side of the screen is just literally used to help uh, correct the shot when we get in the vertical, the left drift and up. And as we can see, it's held pretty well considering there's a lot of reflections and everything else in it. And as we leave the screen here, we can tell that it's held pretty well. So if we go back to the start, we want to set some corner pins up. Um, first thing to do is go over to this little one up here, the planar surface, and just set the surface to the screen. Uh, again, I'm doing a quick lineup drop on this. Uh, again, the foot is available from his uh, comment on slash R After Effects. I'll do a link to it at the bottom of this post. So they're lined up pretty well. And if we go through and just set an adjust track, so I would say set one to some clearly defined points. I'm using the middle of the screens in the corners and the bottom of the laptop on this side. And then this one, I'm just going to use the actual point of the screen as it's pretty well defined. And then we're going to let it drift through and any time it goes severely off track, we're going to correct for it. And that will start bringing the screen back in. Uh, let's do the top left first because it's a good clear point to track. And as we can tell, it's held pretty well. You can do a correct on most of it, just using the auto button, as it's pretty well defined. And I think if we go to the halfway point, there's a little bit of drift here, which we can correct for. Uh, and what I found is the fewer amount of points of these, the better it's generally going to be. So if we just keep going through, seeing where it wanders off. So that part is stable. Let's put one in the middle, it's not really required, but it should be fine. That looks pretty damn good if you ask me. If we go over here, we'll just repeat the exact same process for this. We'll go to the last frame possible, which is this. Just get that realigned in. Go halfway, do the same. 
halfway in here, just the exact same, halfway here. And that has pretty much locked that section of the screen off. If we did the bottom, la uh, bottom left, so we're getting a bit of drift here. We just snap that back over using the auto button. And any side just gets bad. Depends on what accuracy you want to do it. And I'm just going to work through. That's very far off from where it should be. Just commandly correct when it's off. And use these. It allows sub pixel correction. And then final one. It's pretty damn good. And it's out of the screen. We've got some drift here, it's correct for that. It's done a horrible job, so we'll manually fix it. And a horrible drift. And we're nearly there. This one's proving to be the trickier one of all the other corner pins. It's the one that's probably going to cause the most issues when we bring it into After Effects. Let's correct that one. Wildly off. You just got to basically go through and see the problematic ones. Just correct for it. As you notice, this side of the plane is going thrown all over the place. That's no issue. We only used that to get some sort of base track when we left the frame. So if we now quickly put a grid over the track, we can have a quick look at what it looks like. There's a bounce there, which we're going to have to correct for. And that's coming from that. A little bit of a bounce there. A little tiny bounce there as well. So bounce there, we'll just bring this a little bit further down. And if we watch that through, that should be about right. Yep. Okay, so what we want to do now is take out the corner pins and load up After Effects. So if we create a new solid, load it above the footage, like so, paste it on, pre-compose the uh, footage, call it screen, uh, pre-compose you can do through a few different ways. It's Command Shift C on mine, uh, Control Shift C on Windows computers. And then we can now delete that solid. So it's no longer required. And um, we have a perfect corner pin. Um, I'm just going to import some image off my desktop to put onto the screen, which looks like so. And now I'm going to show you a couple of quick tips for compositing it to make it look a bit better. So if we duplicate the screen, and also the footage. We want to create a uh, map off this footage. So we're going to quickly go alpha map. And that will just literally show us that. And then we can set the above one. So if I put that back under and use the alpha map on this, uh, we set this to screen. It'll draw it back over the top. So we're getting some reflections back in. So set your footage to alpha map, and it'll use the one directly above it. So we're getting some in there. And then finally, I would just bring the brightness down of the thing we're compositing. Uh, use a levels adjustment on uh, the footage, which is this screen. Let's clip the white out of it a bit. and shift the gamma point around a bit. So you've got something that sits quite nicely. 
And then obviously you can refine that process a bit better. And the only thing that's really lacking is motion blur. Uh, I prefer, yeah, I personally like real smart motion blur and just drag that on top of the footage. And then we're probably gonna get a few lines coming through it. It's gonna add some motion blur, such as in here, that makes it sit a lot nicer. Okay, I hope that was of some use to some of you, and uh, until next time, bye-bye.